Hello, it's Sunday. I'm reading the Sunday Times, mainstream media. I turn to the centre page. Oh, that's interesting. Sarah Baxter. The old Farage immigrant song sounds way off key. So, I wonder, with that story, and with a story next to that, an editorial that says hitting the testing target was a coup for Matt Hancock, but only the beginning. I wonder... Who is out of touch yet? Is it me or is it the mainstream media? So what this is all about is the fact that I went down last week, um, having commented on LBC, written a piece on the Daily Telegraph, I got a lot of people living in East Sussex getting in touch with me, saying, look, this has been going on for a very, very long time. Yeah, sure, you see people being towed into Dover and taken into reception centres, but the story here in East Sussex is different. What's happening here is people are arriving, uh, they're not being taken in by the border force, the police or anybody else, and they are disappearing into the community. So I made a little video about it, uh, one on a beach at a place called Pet Level, another in Hastings, where I talked to fishermen, one of whom said that he'd seen a boat with 29 people land in a break in the cliffs, and the all disappear. And I have no reason to disbelieve young Freddie, the fisherman from Hastings, at all. Um, and I popped that out. And millions of people watched it online. A lot of comments, a lot of thought, what the hell is going on? So I've been pursuing this. And in fact, um, wrote to the Home Office and asked them whether they accepted that migrants are not being caught and whether they had an estimate of how many were unaccounted for and what was being done to try and track down illegal immigrants that had evaded the border police. Well, the Home Office came back and said, it is completely inaccurate to claim small boats are arriving into the UK every day. We are using all the skills of the Border Force, the National Crime Agency, Immigration Enforcement and French Law Enforcement you're having a laugh, to dismantle and arrest the criminal gangs who trade in people smuggling. And since April the 1st, we've stopped so many from coming, blah, 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 blah. Uh, they finish up by saying, in the last year, over 155 people who entered the UK on small boats have been returned to Europe. So it's all fine, apparently. Uh, Pretty Patel, the Home Secretary, has acknowledged there's a problem but the Home Office answer to my question is that it's actually all fine and we shouldn't get too upset or aerated about it. Well, just a few facts. Since you all went into lockdown, over 600 people that we know of have come into the UK. A 1,000 people, more than a 1,000 people this year have come into the UK. What percentage do you think have been returned? Well, it's about 3%. So it's like there's a great big sign on the cliffs of Dover, which says it's worth every penny you pay the criminal trafficking gangs because more than likely you're going to be able to stay. Uh, and the fact that Sarah Baxter, in the middle of the Sunday Times, can basically say, look, because so many people from migrant communities in the National Health Service are doing such a great job that in future, we really, really, really shouldn't worry about immigration. This is not immigration, it's illegal immigration. It's people breaking into our borders. We have no idea who they are. And given we've got the coronavirus emergency, uh, you know, I had a report from Dover that said there were two people in a boat a couple of weeks ago showing clear signs of suffering from the illness. This is a very, very real issue. But it's very mainstream media. In fact, yesterday, um, yesterday in The Times, um, uh, there was a hilarious piece by Matt Chorley uh, saying you know, how ridiculous it was. How could I even be considered as a key worker? Well, do you know what? Do you know what? Not only do I broadcast, not only do I write, but six million people watched stuff I put up online last week. I do have a voice in this. I do have skin in the game. But of course, the sneerocracy, it's all too much for them. I think that these newspapers, oh, and by the way, have you seen the figures? That now only 17% of people trust 
what they're being told in newspapers. No wonder many of them, not all of them, but many of them, have got, have got circulations that are in real, real trouble. These are Remainers. These are old battles. These are the people that believe in open borders. Indeed, if Tony Blair was still in power, I'm sure that Sarah Baxter, I mean, you know, she'd be up for, well, not just a damehood, I mean, possibly even sainthood, uh, because this is what these people believe in. And anybody else that goes out, uh, writes articles, broadcasts, takes pictures, that's fine. Uh, that's part of the media. That's part of what they're part of. And that's fine. What is Nigel Farage? It's not fine. And amazing. East Sussex police last week were bombarded by complaints that I'd broken lockdown. Uh, Twitter. Twitter. Full of complaints that I should be taken off Twitter for simply telling the truth. And we're almost back to the bad old days where even discussing this is now deemed to be racist. Well, it's not. And I think that for a thousand people to have come into this country already this year is a pretty bad omen for what is to come over the course of a summer, particularly if we get good weather. Now, 50 people, 50, were brought into Dover this morning. I don't know how many disappeared elsewhere along our South England beaches, um, and nor do any of the authorities. But 50 were taken into Dover this morning. I'll have a bet with you that tomorrow morning it's the same or even more. I say that because I've looked at the shipping forecast and it's going to be very, very calm overnight. And I am not going to let this go. You know, whatever the Remain Commentariat think, the fact is the Brexit vote and so much that has happened since is about us getting control of our borders properly and illegal immigration should be absolutely at the top of that list. As for the comments about NHS workers, well, I think we should include care workers as well in our old people's homes, which have been so horrendously neglected by the government during this crisis. And we're told the true figures of how many have died, we may never know. But here's the point. I went out last week, I got an old saucepan, and, and, and knocked away with a wooden spoon. Um, of course I support people on the front line doing very, very brave jobs, often without the right kit, without, without the right equipment, regardless, of course, of where they come from. But I do think that one thing that will come from this crisis, there'll be more young girls and boys that actually want to become nurses and doctors. And maybe, maybe the real moral high ground of this debate is to say that we should not be taking nurses and doctors from countries who probably have health systems inferior to ours and who need them even more than we do. Maybe self-sufficiency, um, and that means, by the way, not having 80% of our antibiotics made in China, maybe self-sufficiency includes being able to train enough of our own people to work in the health service. Now, to continue with my theme about mainstream media, and I'm not especially picking on the Sunday Times, but it just happens to work quite neatly, is that next to the, the old Farage immigrant story, next to that, we've got one of the editorials, which says hitting the testing target was a coup, but only the beginning. <clears throat> so, Matt Hancock, the government, having failed to hit its target of 25,000 tests a day, said in the first week of April, don't worry, there's no problem. It'll be 100,000 a day by the end of the month. And it was pretty clear with a few days to go that it wasn't going to be anything like 100,000. But they threw the kitchen sink at it. Goodness knows how much they spent. After all, Matt Hancock's job matters more than anything else, surely. Um, and then he stood there, smirking on Friday. It's 120,000 tests that were done on the last day of April. Do you know how many it was? It was 73,000 tests that were done. The rest were in the post. Well, you've heard that story before, I'm sure. And yet, to my astonishment, the media all think he's pulled a rabbit out of the hat. The media all think he's done something absolutely fantastic. I think it is dishonest. I think if he worked in the private sector, he'd be kicked out, possibly even charged uh, with being fraudulent 
in terms of the returns that he was putting in uh, to the bosses. Uh, and I find it almost hard to believe. No wonder only 17% of people think that now what they read in the newspapers is true and justified. So I could have got this completely wrong. I could be off beam. But if I see two articles in the centre page of the Sunday Times, one next to each other, both saying uh, that I, that firstly, that I'm wrong and that my view of 100,000 is wrong, I think I might just be right. Let me know. Please comment. Uh, please get in touch. Please subscribe. Please keep in touch. Uh, final thought. Don Bradman, the greatest cricketer, greatest batsman that ever lived, whose average in test cricket was just under 100, suggested by a commentator that if Matt Hancock did the figures, it'd be 130. Just about says it all.